Back in this country, a troubling announcement today, proving once again just how pervasive substance abuse is in our society, how addictive those substances may be, and proving again that the world of sports is part of the real world. The story centers on one of the best known names in professional football, one of America's great athletes, Lawrence Taylor of the New York Giants, an all pro every one of his seven years in the league. He said he hoped this would be his best season ever. Tonight, as Richard Schlesinger reports, that may be a bigger problem than it seemed. As a star linebacker for the New York Giants, Lawrence Taylor has experienced the two sides of success. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs and have some fun. His mad dog style of defense put him in the spotlight as the NFL's most valuable player. But it was the dark side of success that has put him on the sidelines. The NFL suspended Lawrence Taylor today for 30 days. The league calls it substance abuse. It's widely believed to be drug abuse. We still as teammates, we still behind him regardless. Taylor wasn't talking today, but in 1986, he admitted he had a drug problem. He and his teammates said he had licked it. I had every reason to believe that uh, things were in pretty good shape. Today's action seems to say they weren't. Mm -hmm. Taylor was suspended on the very day Washington Redskins defensive end Dexter Manley returned to his team. Manley was suspended for 30 days, also for substance abuse. You know, I'm real happy to be back with the Washington Redskins, and I just feel that it's in my best interest and in the Washington Redskins' best interest that I make no further comment. A total of nine NFL players have been suspended for substance abuse this year, and the season hasn't even begun yet. Last year, there was only one. And some experts are saying football players have a particularly difficult time kicking drugs. These drugs will defeat, to a large extent, fatigue. They give a person a great sense of confidence. It's, a, it's false confidence, but nevertheless, they, they feel it. Taylor's suspension is not just a personal tragedy. It is a blow to the team as well. The regular season starts next week, and the Giants will go into it without one of their biggest stars. Richard Schlesinger, CBS News, New York. And still ahead on tonight's CBS Evening News, Bruce Hall on a prison escape attempt by a high-tech bandit. And Harold Dow on the oldest form of charity. Does it help or hurt? The Reagan administration today gave up trying to close the PLO mission to the United Nations. The Justice Department said that U.S. interests are best served by not appealing a recent federal court ruling. A judge said the Reagan administration does not have the authority to close the U.N. mission. The Polish strike situation worsened today. 5,000 workers at a key steel mill went out. Solidarity leader Lech Wałęsa is said to have rejected an implied offer to join government talks unless he can represent the banned union. This Poland's government is refusing to allow. The plot involved a sophisticated West German jailed in this country. Big money and a daring breakout plan. What it became was the great escape that wasn't. Bruce Hall has details. This Florida prison was supposed to be the site of a dramatic weekend escape by one of the world's leading computer technology bandits, Werner Bruchhausen, serving 15 years for smuggling military and scientific high-tech items to the Soviets. Acting on a tip from authorities, TV station WCTV set up a camera outside the prison. A blackened, unmarked helicopter came in low through the treetops, crossing over the prison fence, hovering above the open yard. That was a government helicopter, as I'm sure some of you speculated. Uh, it was flown by a U.S. Customs Service uh, agent. As soon as Bruchhausen ran toward the chopper, it flew off. Authorities said he had offered up to $250,000 for the helicopter escape. He made, uh, at least to my satisfaction, enough uh, steps in the direction that would indicate uh, what his intent was. Bruchhausen has now been transferred to a high-security prison in Atlanta. For many years from his home in Munich, Germany, Bruchhausen ran a very lucrative high-tech smuggling operation, buying computer equipment in the United States, sending the items to places like Austria, and then selling them to the Soviet Union. He always claimed he operated through loopholes in the law. It uh, might be a uh, slight infringement of rules, but uh, it's uh, no crime. 
Authorities say Bruchhausen will now find out in this country attempted jailbreak is more than just a slight infringement of the rules. Bruce Hall, CBS News, Atlanta. The government today reported that sales of new homes fell 4.7% in July. That's the sharpest drop since December. Some analysts said the decline reflected rising mortgage interest rates. Average price of a new home in July, $146,000.